Hello everyone, it's Mrs Jennison here and I'm an Associate Director for Outwood Grange Academies Trust. Welcome to today's lesson and today we are looking at acid and carbonates. Before we start, it'd be really useful if you were watching this at home that you turn off your notifications. It would also be really useful if you had a pen and a piece of paper available. Now this is a lesson in our mass matters topic and so far we have looked at conservation of mass and we have started to look at what reactions produce gas and that is complete in today's lesson. So our challenge for today's lesson is to be able to describe the reaction of carbonates and acid. Our aspire is to be able to explain why the reaction of carbonates and acid can result in a change in mass. Now, before we get started, I'd just like a little recap from our previous lessons and I'd like you to name the acid which would be used to produce each of these salts. Tin sulphate, lead nitrate and calcium chloride. Okay, so you should have had that sulfuric acid would be used to produce tin sulfate, nitric acid would be used to produce lead nitrate, and hydrochloric acid would be used to produce calcium chloride. Now, a little bit of a recap from Fizz and Pop again. Um, when acids and alkalis are mixed together, they undergo a chemical reaction to form a neutral substance. A strong acid will neutralise a strong alkali and a weak acid will neutralise a weak alkali. Now, when an acid meets an alkali, they neutralise each other and they can produce water and a salt. A neutralisation reaction is where an acid reacts with a base to produce a neutral solution of salt and water. So if hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide, sodium chloride solution, which is pH 7, would be formed. So this is a demonstration to show you the reaction between a carbonate and acid. So in this test tube here are some pieces of calcium carbonate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some acid to that carbonate. And this is hydrochloric acid. Now you can see that the reaction starts to fizz, but the gas produced is colourless. So I'm going to perform a test to test for that gas. So I'm bubbling that gas via a delivery tube, I'll just show you the setup there, into a second test tube containing some lime water. And at the start, this was colourless, but you can see as we bubble the carbon dioxide through it, and we now know that it is carbon dioxide, the lime water turns cloudy. And this is a test for carbon dioxide, which means we now know that the reaction of this carbonate with acid produces carbon dioxide alongside the salt and the water. water. Now the general equation for the reaction of carbonates with acid is acid plus metal carbonate forms salt and water and also carbon dioxide gas is produced. Now, some examples of metal carbonates are sodium carbonate, calcium carbonate and potassium carbonate. Now, the reaction does look similar to that of acids with metals, 
but the only way we can tell the difference is by testing the gas which is produced. Now, in this case, we are producing carbon dioxide, which can be tested by using lime water. And if you bubble that gas through lime water, it will turn cloudy. And that's how we can see the difference between carbon dioxide and hydrogen, because hydrogen would not turn lime water cloudy. There's a different test for hydrogen gas, and we saw that in our video for metals and acids. Now, an example equation for this, if calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid were to react, the salt we would form would be calcium chloride. Remember, the first part of the salt comes from the metal in the carbonate, and the second part comes from the acid which was used. Because it's a metal carbonate that reacted, we will also form water and carbon dioxide gas. Now I'd like you to use that general equation to complete the equations below. So you should have that copper carbonate plus hydrochloric acid would form copper chloride and water and carbon dioxide. Sodium carbonate and sulfuric acid would form sodium sulfate and water and carbon dioxide. And copper carbonate with nitric acid would form copper nitrate and water and carbon dioxide. Now, metal carbonates can commonly be found in the shells of sea creatures. So I'm going to insert a video here that goes through some of the effects that ocean acidification can have on these sea creatures and their shells. By now you've heard that the way we're living is filling up our atmosphere with carbon dioxide. As a result, the planet's warming. Heat waves and floods are more likely to be extreme and people's lives will get tougher. And the more we learn about climate change, the more risks we uncover. Since we started burning fossil fuels, the ocean has absorbed about half of all the CO2 we humans have put out. That's why it's called the planet's biggest carbon sink. Now this is good because it's kept a lot of CO2 out of the atmosphere. But as the ocean warms, it takes up less and less CO2. And with all that CO2 in the sea, scientists are shedding light on, well, an ocean of problems. Ready for the first big problem? Some sea creatures like clams, oysters, and coral, their shells and skeletons are getting weaker. Okay, you've got bigger problems than easy to crack clams? Maybe not if you're among the one in seven people who get most of their protein from seafood. Or if you understand how unstable the world would be with a billion more hungry people. What's weakening the shells? Well, these little creatures are going about their lives scooping up molecules called carbonate ions to be the building blocks of their shells. But when CO2 reacts with seawater, it releases hydrogen ions, which compete with shells for carbonate. With more hydrogen ions floating around in the ocean, our little friends have to spend more energy building their shells and have less energy for finding food. That means it's harder to grow and more will die off before they get big. So the fish that eat the clams or live among the coral will have a harder time surviving, meaning the fish that dine on them won't have enough to eat. And so we won't have enough to eat. Remember those pesky hydrogen ions generated by more CO2? They don't just take away the carbonate ions that these little clams need. They also make the ocean more acidic. It's already become 30% more acidic since we started spewing all this CO2, and it could get much worse. We could change the ocean's chemistry so much that shells actually start to dissolve. That means if we don't turn this problem around, your great-grandkids might think of reefs the way you think of a dodo bird. 
And with one in four ocean species living in coral reef ecosystems, weaker coral could threaten the foundation of the whole ocean food chain. But why panic, right? Life always seems to find a way to adapt, but it needs time. In a few decades, we might make the oceans more acidic than they've been in 20 million years. It's hard to imagine any ecosystem quickly adapting to that big of a change. But things don't have to get that bad. We've started this problem, and we're going to fix it, beginning at its source, carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels. So now it's time to have a go at some practice questions. So the word equation for the reaction between magnesium carbonate and hydrochloric acid is shown below. Magnesium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid forms magnesium chloride, carbon dioxide and water. Now, Sadiq added hydrochloric acid to magnesium carbonate in a flask. What would be the pH of the hydrochloric acid? How would the lime water change during this reaction? So then I'd like you to complete the word equation for the reaction that took place. Magnesium carbonate plus sulfuric acid forms blank plus carbon dioxide plus water. And also Sadiq made a model volcano using a similar reaction. The vinegar reacted with the magnesium carbonate. They'd like you to suggest the pH of the vinegar. And the last part, the froth running down the side of the model represents a part of a real volcano. Give the name of this part.
Okay, so the first part, any number less than seven. Now, because it was hydrochloric acid, I would say preferably between one and three. It would turn milky or cloudy, so the lime water would be reacting with that carbon dioxide, and that's why we'd see that change. The salt that would be formed is magnesium sulfate. The pH of the vinegar would be a number less than seven. Now, because it's vinegar, technically it's a weaker acid, which means it would be more around the four five mark, the pH. And then the part that the foam is representing on that volcano was actually the lava. Okay, so that's everything for me in this video and I will see you soon.